Yay! What's up, people? This is Jose Trujillo, of course. Who else? World's greatest living artist coming to you from the art studio. And I'm going to be doing a painting here of a landscape. Okay? It's going to be an awesome landscape, just not just any landscape. This is Masonite. Prime Masonite. Prime to my liking. All right. <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. Want to go together live? I'd love that. Sorry about the shaking ass. Parks the artist. I don't know how to do that. Let me figure out how to do that. And that'd be totally cool. Uh, uh, I don't know. I didn't even know you could go live like like you know together on Instagram. I still haven't figured out Instagram, so. So for, forgive my my uh, my ignorance on the on the platform. Uh, I got my Starbucks ready. Mmm, let's go. I got all kinds of cool stuff ready. All right, guys. So let's do this. I'm going to draw a little doodle. Okay. I'm gonna start coming up with some ideas in order to create some sort of uh, atmospheric landscape. Okay. Uh, write in the comments if you don't see it, update Insta. Awesome, awesome. I'll check it out, Parks. Yeah, Starbucks. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Let's go. So, little hillside. People, sometimes we make it too, too, too complicated. It doesn't have to be complicated, okay? You, you guys know my song. Let's do maybe a little trail right here. Okay. Maybe there's something happening right here. Maybe, maybe there's a, a little some some. Maybe there's a little tree right here. Who knows, right? Maybe there's one right here. Maybe there's one right here. Okay. I want to. I want to be able to create. Uh, um. How do you call? There's my, there, there's my dog out there. I want to be able to create. Uh, movement, but. And in a scale, if you were put, if we were put to, were to put it in a scale, you want to make sure that something is a bit heavier, just slightly in art. It's a good way to look at it. Okay, check it out. So this is a little, a little, a little heavier. This is called visual weight. It's one of the ways people call it. I don't know. Some people, some people are too, too, too. Uh, uh, Concern with what you want to call it, okay? And then, okay. So we're drawing it. We're doing a little something right here. But our, you can even do visual weight with color, okay? So it doesn't have to be objects. It doesn't have to be objects at all. You can you can totally make one side uh, lighter and another one darker. And then of course your darker is gonna have. There's gonna more weight is going to feel there um, even though there's a absence of color there more weight is going to feel just because of how uh, we condition to see weight okay so here we go here it creates more of a mass atmospheric perspective I love that yeah so this brush is like wearing out and I and I kind of I kind of don't like it when they're wearing out so we're going to we're going to pull out a new one, okay? Now, I don't mind using them, but when they start like going round on me and just kind of playing around, I I keep using them, but I use them for, for like touch-ups and details. I always like to keep my brushes kind of, uh, kind of new, okay? Not too new, but kind of new. This this helps me figure th things out. This is a number 10. This brush is about two, three bucks, okay? Remember I told you guys to be so concerned with, with buying expensive stuff especially when you're starting out I know I I know that that people that already know how to do this uh, or that have a lot of experience is what I'm trying to say I know they're probably like man you know whatever but uh, I, I want to use the most expensive brush you know I don't know uh, maybe maybe that's your jam I don't know it's not mine anymore it used to be until I realized oh man I'm, I don't think this is a good idea 
because I paint so much, number one. Number two, I find out that it doesn't make that much difference. Um, paint does make a difference though, guys. Paint is the one thing that I always, I always talk about. Make sure you, if you're using, if you're using, acrylic, I don't know so much. Um, acrylic, I think most brands will give you a good pigmentation. Even, even, uh, even crafts, arts and crafts brands and whatnot. Uh, I know, I know, I know a lot of artists are like, oh my God, no arts and crafts acrylic. But you know what? Whatever works for you. Jackson Pollock painted with house paint, so what can I tell you? I can't, I can't say no to your genius. Come on. So, um, but, but oil, oil, you want to make sure that it's pigmented because, uh, because this is what I like using, so <laughs> I pay attention to that. <laughs> I also like using acrylic from time to time. Um, and I'm actually, I'm actually looking to, to get a, a large studio as we're talking, a larger studio. And, and I want to, I want to put a, a, just an acrylic station. Because I don't like like pulling out the acrylics, using them, and then uh, like you know put them away because I don't have enough room because everything's like oil and ink. I, I do a lot of ink drawings, um, so and charcoal and stuff like that. So I don't like pulling it out and then being like, oh okay, well I'm I'm through with this today, and then having to pick up the mess. I, I don't like that. And I don't like it not because I have to pick up the mess, but because it's, it's such a time kill, you know? Like, it's a time kill. It's better to be outside and ready to go when I need it. So... Check it out! Ooh la la! See? Red is, is such a powerful color. How's it going, Wendy? Wendy Vargas, how's it going? Thank you for joining us. So, I find this type of paintings very, uh, I don't know, they're, they, 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 it's, there's a little something to them. The more colorist, atmospheric type of work makes me feel a bit uh, uh, more, more artsy. I don't know why. You would think that the more classic sometimes, right? The more classic, the more structure, or maybe the more abstract. These are abstract, but not so much. And I'm going to tell you why, okay? There is form to them, you know? Sometimes sometimes when there is no form, we... we I mean, when there's form, we tend to say it's abstract. It's more expressionist for the most part. It, I mean, it is abstract, but it's more expressionist, you yeah. know? It falls more into the expressionist. Let me let me let me coin this: the expressionist spectrum. <laughs> I'm just joking. I just made that up. I don't know. <laughs> so, but it makes me feel it makes me feel happy. You know, this type of this type of dealios make me feel. You know, because I'm I'm only looking again. I'm looking for tone. I'm looking for for what would it feel like to be there. You know. What does it feel like to be there? Not not what it looks like necessarily, because because if you just focus on what it looks like, you may miss the 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 you may you might miss other aspects of it. Okay, I don't think it's a bad idea to focus on what it looks like. I don't I don't think at all. But but if you're doing some sort of abstract expressionist work, impressionistic, contemporary impressionistic work, that type of deal. Uh, I would for sure try to pay more attention to, uh, maybe not more, but equally, whatever you want. I don't know, to each their own. But I, I would suggest paying attention to, to what it feels like to be there. What does it feel like to be there? What's the feeling in there? You know, a little, a little exploration into the psyche, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I sure am. I have some paper right here. I'm doing this over and over. This muscle is so tired. I've been painting for a few hours. <laughs> I am. Um, I'm doing this as I'm to keep to keep 
to keep it somewhat clean. Now, some people get very anal about this and they make it, they try to get it very clean. If that's your jam, cool, that's not my jam. Uh, I don't like to keep it too clean because unless I'm doing something else, but for the most part, I don't like to keep it too clean because it slows me down, number one. That's the most important part. And number two, I find that there is no reason for it. Like you start figuring out the pressure so that you don't muddy your paint. Or if you want to muddy it, you know when and where. Uh, so you start understanding pressure. Like how much pressure you're, you're applying on the, on the surface. And that ensures that no matter how, how dirty your brush is, yeah. Sometimes it's just a bad habit to clean the brush. I'm going to tell you guys to, to constantly be cleaning the brush. And I, I learned this from a, from a, a, a master painter. <laughs> a master painter. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, I, I believe it. I think I have the bad habit of over cleaning the brush, to be, to be uh, honest with you guys. Like, like, don't pick up that habit. <laughs> Uh, there's there's habits that I have that I wish I didn't uh, when it comes to painting, of course. <laughs> uh, that's one of them. Because when I'm in flow, I realize I don't need to constantly be cleaning the brush. See, every time you're stopping, you're slowing down, you're you're doing, you know, you're looking at it and you're going, hmm, hmm. You, you're like... You're doing this. A lot of artists do this. They do this, but they do they do they do dumb shit like this. And they're like, hmm, okay, let's see. Every time you're doing that, it, 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 I don't know. Maybe it's your jam. Uh, it means you're not sure what you're doing. In my in my in my perspective, in my experience. And I know that every time that I slow down, that I'm like, oh, okay, let's see. You know. And it's not one after the other, like one movement after another. You don't have to frantically, frantically try to paint and, and move really fast. And no, you, it's just one after the other. It's one after the other. If you're not moving one after the other, uh, you don't know what you're doing. And this does not mean that you don't know how to paint or this, no. This means that you don't have, you may, you may be a master painter. But I think, that, I think that, because this has happened to me over and over. What I realized is that, I'm not having confidence in what I'm doing. And if you don't have confidence in what you're doing, um, it starts uh, showing, right? But it shows in different ways. It starts subtly showing and, and I, gotta go, I, 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 gotta, I gotta go get a couple of uh, coffee. I gotta go uh, uh, wash my hands because uh, uh, you start procrastinating in other words. And it's because you're trying to avoid it, not because it's difficult, but because you don't know what you're doing. Because you don't have enough confidence. There's not enough commitment. And I know I've talked about this in other videos. I know it makes no sense sometimes when I say stuff like this. Um, but that's, in my experience, that's what it is. It's been that over and over and over in my personal, in my personal artistic journey. When I'm like, oh man, um, you know, every, every time I'm avoiding I'm taking too long, I start cleaning this too much. Every time I'm doing that kind of thing, I already know, dude, you're avoiding something because you're fearing something. And, and you're not fearing the work, you're fearing that you don't know what the next step is. And when you don't, when you don't know what the next step is, something strange starts happening. You start believing that little voice that says you can't do it. And it's not true. It's not true, don't believe that little voice. Uh, one of my all-time favorite mentors says over and over, there's things you need to know. And I, don't, and I know he's not talking about knowing in the sense of like, like necessarily knowledge, but ex experience. Of course it's knowledge, but it's a different type of knowledge. It's not, it's not book knowledge. It's, it's, it's experiential, right? There's certain things you need to know, and if you don't know that, uh, for example, I know that if I don't, if I don't do certain little things to prime my day, I'm not going to have a very productive day, right? 
those are things that I know. Those are things that that not that uh, that I read somewhere and it made sense. I read it a long time ago and I never practiced it. But when I got to practicing it, when I actually got to that to that place where I actually start practicing it, I realized that I knew it now. That before I didn't know it, I knew the information, but I did I did not have the awareness to do it. So I, therefore, I didn't know. I know it sounds crazy, but hopefully, I. I'm making some sense. So anyways. <laughs> anyways. <laughs> it's other like natural beauty. Anyways. Check it out. Ooh la la. It's only when I start to trust See, you can't trust unless you know something, or unless, or unless you just completely start trusting, and then and then you figure it out. That's a little harder many times for, for most of us. You know, we want to have the information, and then we trust. But many times you don't have the information, so you have to play. You have to play by ear until you start gathering the information. What I mean by that is, is if if you don't know where to place the color next, that's not because you know. A, B, and C. That's just because you don't have enough information yet. You haven't gathered enough information. So my suggestion, while you're gathering information, place the color anywhere, but place it somewhere. Don't leave it. Don't leave the brush on your hand, and don't leave the color on the brush ever. Keep moving it. it you will become a better artist if you just keep moving, as opposed to figure and figure. What do I sound like? I know what I'm talking about, man. Sound like I read so that I read that somewhere, but I didn't. <laughs> so there you guys have it. Check it out. Super colorist, super awesome, super atmospheric. There's something happening. All sorts of things start happening in there. You know, the magic, the Jose Trujillo magic is right there. Let me see. Somewhere in there it says world's greatest living artist. Oh yeah, right here. Bam. This is the world's greatest living artist. Yeah. All right. Let's do this. Let's add a little bit of blue. Because if you don't have blue on this, in the sky, have it somewhere else. Kiss it with blue. Kiss the painting with blue. Ooh la la. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about, guys. This, this is how you do this. Look at that. And I don't even know if I want to sell this anymore. <laughs> Every now and then, my wife walks in my studio and is like, uh, you better not sell that. And, man, I'm second guessing this one. I feel like I, I want to keep it. Check it out. It's an explosion. Come and look at it, honey. You you decide whether whether do I do I put it on eBay or do I keep it? Do we keep it in the in the gang of the other ones we keep? Check it out. Check out the fuchsia. Oh, that's lovely. I nailed it, huh? That is so beautiful. I nailed this. I know. I'm always so proud of me. <laughs> I'm always, keep it. I'm always so proud of me. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's decide. One, two, three. Keep it or put it? List it. Somebody will love it. You think so? Yeah. yeah. I want it, but list it. All right. Gotta pay for the braces. Gotta pay for the braces. <laughs> for my kid. <laughs> uh, T Money Mill says, do you do well selling on eBay? Uh, yeah, I totally do. Uh I, I have been uh, making a living as an artist for the past six years, a full-time uh, living, and uh, I do different stuff. I don't just do eBay. I'm very, I'm very uh, uh, aggressive in creating work and sharing my work, so I do different stuff. But yeah, eBay, eBay is definitely a, uh, one of those good, good avenues. It's been, it's been a blessing for me. So guys, I'm going to list it. For a 99 cent auction, okay? The auction's gonna start at 99 cent, no reserve, of course, like like uh, like all my 99 cent work. Uh, 
It's gonna start at a dollar, 99 cents. I don't know, what can I tell you? That's, that's how eBay is. So, uh, crossing my fingers, someone's like, dude, I really want it, and lifts it a little higher than 99 cents, but if not, well, oh well, it was meant to go. So, uh, click on the, where, where am I gonna put it? Yeah, I'm gonna put it on my Instagram wall. And on my profile, there's a link direct to this painting, to this painting right here. And yeah, it's gonna be cool. So check it out. All right, guys, take care. Man, I nailed this. Look at this color right here. Look at that fuchsia. That's fuchsia right there. This is what fuchsia is supposed to look like. It's not pink, it's not purple, it's not violet. It's fuchsia, baby. <laughs> look at that green. Mm -mm. Green and fuchsia. If you want to make a nice gray, I didn't put any grays here. I, I did put grays, but but I didn't put like like gray, gray, gray. Uh, if you want to make a nice gray, like super cool impressionist gray, try playing with fuchsia and green. I promise, you'll be uh, you'll be glad you did. You start. I mean, don't just don't just don't do half and half because then you're gonna get something else. Like like play with it, fuchsia and green. All right, guys, thank you so much. Take care. I will be uh, sharing some of my work soon again. In the meantime, uh, be awesome. Okay, take care of yourself. Bye bye.